Hey everyone, this is Dave with Blue Bears Games, and we are doing another episode of Blue's Budget Brews. Uh, for those of you that have never seen any of my videos, welcome, and for those of you that have, welcome back. Uh, today's video, obviously with the Blue's Budget Brews, is going to be Mono Black Tormod the Desecrator. The difference between this and a regular Mono Black deck that I, I'm going to do, it's a little different, is... It's going to be actually partners, but because the second partner doesn't really matter so much, I figured that since it doesn't have to go in the 99 and I wanted access to it at any time, and since both had partner, why not? I was already going to put Keskit, the Flesh Sculptor, in the deck anyway, so since it has partner as well, might as well put him as partner so you have access to it quicker. So, Tormod, one black, three of any, it's a 4-2, Zombie Wizard. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard... Create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token. Okay. So, to clarify this, it's each instance that it happens. So, if you happen to return more than one thing or have more than one thing at a specific time leave your graveyard, you still only create one. But if there is a pause, a then, something that makes it so the instances are two separate instances, you create that many more tokens. Kess Kit is one black, two of any, and a one three, and you can tap Kess Kit to sacrifice three other artifacts and or creatures. So no matter what mix you have, you can have two creatures, one artifact, they can even be artifact creatures. They do not count double, so it has to be three separate things, creatures and or artifacts. You can look at the top three cards of your library, put two of them into your hand, and the other into your graveyard. And again, it has partner as well. So, the deck is based around Tormod solely. Keskit was an added bonus. So let's get into the deck and we'll go from there. Uh, I will ask, once again, as I always do it now at the beginning of my videos, please like the video, give it a thumbs up, I kind of would like to see that happen. Uh, share the video out to your friends. And subscribe to the channel, we are getting up there in how many we have. So let me zoom a little bit here. We're going to go over the lands first. And then I'm going to go over some additional things you can do to make this deck a little bit more, I guess, better is for lack of a better word. Alright, so we start with a Witch's Cottage. Uh, it's a swamp itself, and it has the ability to put a creature from your graveyard on top of your library. Fits in with Tormod's ability. Ash Barrens for the cycling, because black doesn't have a whole lot of card draw. So, I mean, it has some, but not enough, and you want to just basically get through the... You want to get through your lands and get better draws. Baron Moor again, same thing, more cycling, Polluted Mire again, and then Desert of the Glorified are the, the cycling lands. Theramorphic Expanse, once again, so that you can get better draws, get some of the bad land draws out, and Evolving Wilds. Uh, Dakmore Salvage, it enters tapped, adds a black, and it has Dredge 2. Dredge fits the theme for Tormod. Always, always, always trying to find ways to make everything in the deck fit the theme of the commander. Uh, for those of you that know, don't know what Dredge is, so this has Dredge 2. It says, if you would draw a card, instead, you may put exactly two cards from the top of your library into your graveyard. So you mill two cards. And then if you do, you may return this card from your graveyard to your hands. So that's how it fits into Tormod, because it leaves your graveyard. Uh, Myriad Landscape, so you, obviously you're... There's going to be a lot of basic swamps in here, so you're going to actually be able to use this very well because uh, it puts two of the same land type from your graveyard in, or I'm sorry, from your library into your hand. Uh, I'm sorry, into play, so you can go get two swamps. Uh, Mortuary Mire, again, same thing with the graveyard recursion. Uh, Moral to Folly, same thing, returns a creature. Haunted Femgraph reads, to, it taps to Atticolis, and then you can pay three, tap it, and sacrifice it. Return a creature card at random from your graveyard to your hand, so again, more recursion. Cradle of the Accursed, just because, I mean, it creates a zombie, and most of the things you're going to have in here are going to be zombies. Not everything, just so you're aware, a lot of things are going to be skeletons. And then a whole bunch of swamps. And as always, I'll have the de full deck list for my MTG Goldfish account linked in the description of the video so you can go ahead and look and see exactly how many swamps i believe it was like 28 or something like that all right so black does not do ramp it's not green so i have to go into the artifact version of it uh for budgetary purposes we are going to you know what hold on before i go into that let me give you a list of a couple of cards that you can use that will upgrade this deck you know much 
you know, make it much faster, much better. All right, so for the lands, we're in mono black. So a lot of the, the lands you can use are good, but they're expensive. All right, so we start off with the old combo of Cabal, Coffers, and Urbo Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. I will put those on the screen for you guys to see what they do. It creates a lot of mana. If you want to add to that, you can also put a Cabal Stronghold in there. It does essentially the same thing as Cabal Coffers, but not really close, but, but you know, not anywhere near as good. Uh, you have Crypt of Agadim. This deck is basically focused on putting creatures into the grave, taking them out. Crypt of Agadim gives you mana for having creatures in your graveyard. Black creatures specifically. Uh, you have Phyrexian Tower. It's a sack outlet, and it adds mana, so you can use that as well. And then you have Unholy Grotto and Volrath Stronghold. Uh, both are good for recursion. While the Unholy Grotto only does zombies, there should be a bunch of zombies in here. And if you upgrade the deck, you can put more. Uh, Volar Stronghold just puts any. So you can take them from your graveyard, put them on top of your library. It fits the theme of Zormod. So those are the quick suggestions I have as far as your, your land. If you want to upgrade the deck, it's expensive to upgrade it. This is the budget version. But if you have the means, I suggest doing so. So for the ramp, again, Black doesn't do ramp. So we have to go on the budget. With Traveler's Amulet, so it goes and gets a land. Explorer's Scope, because you will be attacking with some some things. Uh, you're creating enough tokens that if you attack with them... Now remember, it says if it attacks, it doesn't say if it deals damage. You can look at the top of your top card of your library. And if it's a land, you may put it on the battlefield. So that's sort of ramp, sort of not. Burnished Heart, because it goes and gets two basic lands and puts them into the, onto the battlefield. Plus, the other thing about this deck is it's all about recurring stuff from your graveyard. So you can use them multiple times. And then Seer's Lantern, it's just a generic 3 to cast artifact, but it lets you scry so you can get some stuff out of the way. So, it, it can be the difference between a good draw and a bad draw. So, as far as the, uh, the, the upgrade that you can do for mana ramping, obviously you'd put a Soul Ring in here. There's no reason really to put it in here, especially at the budget version. Uh, two colorless isn't going to help you, but if you're trying to get something accomplished even faster, it, it works. Uh, you have the two converted mana cost rocks like Mindstone, Thought Vessel, all those things. There's a zero to cast one that comes in with a multi kicker. You can do that as well. Uh, you got the artifact fetches, artifact land fetchers, and I, that's what I call them. It's stuff like Expedition Map and Wayfarer's Bobble. And then you have the big rocks. If you really want to go big, you go with a Mana Crypt or a Mox Diamond, a Chrome Mox, or even the newly released Jeweled Lotus now. So couple of options you can choose to go ahead and uh, upgrade this deck, make it really quick, really fast. So, up next we have the creatures. All these are going to be centered around the same things. Uh, we're going to go with, oh, this is more of a, I, I don't know how to describe this, so I'm going to start with Scare Tailor just because it can do stuff for you. It can put land into play when it becomes tapped. It can also return a land from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So, if you were using Keskit, and lands go in, you can get them back with Scare Tiller. Tenacious Dead because it returns back from the grave. That's the whole purpose of this purpose of this deck. Uh, Sanitarium Skeleton, again, also returns to your hand from the grave. Uh, same thing with Reassembling Skeleton, only it returns to the battlefield. So you see where I'm going with this whole theme. Everything returns from your grave at some point. Or has the ability to make other things do so. Durable, Durable Coil Bug also returns. Corpse Hauler actually returns something from uh, your grave to his hand when it's sacked. Eternal Taskmaster. Like I said, here's some zombies coming up. Lampad of Death Vigil is actually in here. Mostly, it's it's the one thing that doesn't, one of the things that doesn't return from the grave, but it's, sacrifice, you can, it's a sack outlet. There are a bunch of sack outlets in here. I tried to get as many free for cheap, like monetarily cheap, but free to use as I could. There aren't that many that are cheap. Uh, this one, each opponent loses life and you gain a life, so at least you can get some, some value out of your creatures dying, because you want them in the grave to come back anyway, so you get that. Nether Shadow, it's an oldie. It, uh, it can come back from the grave and come into play directly. Anti-Snitch, I don't have a whole lot of ability to get this to come back on it, from its ability at this moment. Some things haven't been printed yet. Some things might be later. There's one other thing in here that can return it as far as being a rogue. 
I don't have any goblins that come back from the grave, so they're not in here yet. But this is in here for when it does happen. There are rogues being printed all the time now because the rogues are a thing. So it may happen sooner than we think. <laughs> Spark Reaper, another sack outlet. It can actually, you can sacrifice a creature, gain a life, and draw a card. So it's one of the card drawer stack outlets. Uh, same thing with Soul Reaper of Mogus. Falcon Wreath Torture, also another sack outlet. Uh, and remember, I've, I've said this before, since I started doing this new, instead of reading off every card, you can just pause the video and look at the card as I'm going. Uh, Defiant Salvager is sacrifice an artifact or a creature, and the only reason why they're in here is for sack outlets, just remember that, and it's free, so that one's one of the free ones, and Falcon Wrath Torture is one of the free ones. Ravenous Harpy, another sack outlet, but that one costs. It's also a flyer. So the way that you can actually kill your opponents will be through some of the creatures actually getting bigger as you go. Ghoul Razor is one of the zombies that can return something from your graveyard to your hand. And you're going to see a loop here in a minute. <laughs> Devouring Swarm, another free sack outlet. Gravebane Zombie returns itself from, its, from the graveyard to the top of your library just for dying. Uh, Cabal Paladin, I will explain this. And actually, I'm going to put this to the side probably. And this is part of a loop that I'm going to explain in a little bit. Uh, Oval Chase Daredevil. Uh, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may return it from your graveyard to your hand. And I'll explain that. It's not part of the loop, but it can be. Uh, one of the loops is the Grave Digger Grave Shifter loop, where, you know, you have one in play, one in the grave, or one in your hand, one in play. If it's sacrifice one of them, then you play one to bring one back, sacrifice the one that was in play, cast the other one to bring the other one back. It's just a loop. There's another one in here that's a little bit better than this one, but it's it's a loop. Uh, Driver of the Dead, another good one. Uh, when it dies, return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to your hand. There's a bunch of stuff in here that's converted two mana cost or less. Uh, one of them very specific that I'll explain in a little bit. Uh, Crawl Swarm, it's a 4-1 flyer, so there's another way to get some damage in. And then you can actually discard a creature card to return it from your graveyard to your hand, so that actually does something even better. You can discard a card, put something else in your grave, and bring this back, and then you're looping again. Midnight Scavengers returns something that's converted may cost three or less from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, Sly Requisitioner has Improvised, so your artifacts help pay for it. And then whatever non-token artifact you control is put in your graveyard from the battlefield, you can create a 1-1 one -one servo token, so even more tokens created. And then you've got Lingering Phantom, which is whenever you cast a Historic spell. So Historic is Artifacts, Sagas, and Legendaries. Uh, you may pay a black, and if you do, return it from your graveyard to your hand. And it's a 5-4, so again, more damage that you can get in with a bigger creature. Alright, so, with our creature section, there is a bunch of upgrades you can do here. Technically, because you're in black, as far as the upgrades go for black creatures for this kind of deck, it's actually the biggest section. So, you have things like Grave Crawler. It's a one to cast that you can keep casting. If you have a graveyard or if you have a zombie in play, you know, you can cast it, sack it, cast it, sack it. It doesn't really matter. Relentless Dead, another good one. Gutter Bones, more zombies. Uh, Dread Wanderer, you can put in here. You have a Ghastly Remains. Ghastly Remains actually will come in as a 0 0 most of the time, and then it'll die immediately. So you remove it from the graveyard, so you get the token. It'll die immediately. It goes back. You can keep doing it over and over if you have enough black mana. Uh, Golgari Thug, because of the uh, aforementioned from Dakmore Savage, you have the um, the dredge theme. There are a lot of dredge cards that you could possibly put in this deck to make it work. I don't suggest a lot because it's not a dredge deck, but the theme is there. Uh, Kravokian Horror and Ashen Ghoul are both oldies but goodies. Uh, they can come back from the grave by themselves. You've got Soul of Innistrad. It's a little expensive, but you can do that. And then, of course, you've got the, uh, the MTG Familiar to go ahead. And that app that I explained to you in one of the videos, and I'll put another thing up there on the screen. You can go ahead and use that to look for creatures and put in the thing, you know, return from graveyard. And then it can be, obviously, things from hand. It can be, or back to hand, or it can be things back to play, stuff like that. So you can put that in there as well. All right, that is not next. Up next will be, so three utility sections for this one, and I'm gonna go over all three and then give you a list of upgrades. So in the utility section for this, we're gonna go with the first one being returning things from the grave. 
however they get there. It doesn't matter if they're coming to play or to your hand. They're just leaving your graveyard, which affects K Tormod entirely. So we start with Ghoul Caller's Chant. It returns uh, a creature or two zombies. Grim Discovery, another one of those, you know, it just brings something from your graveyard to your hand. Macabre Waltz. Disturbed Burial is a buyback version of returning something from your graveyard to your hand so you can keep doing it over and over. Resourceful Return. Cemetery Recruit, and you get to draw a card if it was a zombie. Forever Young, so you can put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library and then draw a card, so it's always nice to have that. Recover also lets you draw a card. Fortuitous Find lets you return either one or the other or both. Blood for Bones. You can sacrifice a creature, so it's a sack outlet. And then you can return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, and then return another card from your graveyard to your hand. So with the then there, that's what I was talking about. There are two instances of something leaving your graveyard with this kind of a card. So you get one token for the one coming from the graveyard to the battlefield, and then you get another token for returning something from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, Gruesome Menagerie. One of the few rares in this deck because this deck doesn't fo uh, focus too heavily on the rare sex side of the cards. I mean, monetarily speaking, it can't. Uh, so this can return three. However, the way that this is worded only returns or gives you one token with Tormod. Even though it says then, the way it's worded is a little weird, but you choose first and then return them. So you get a converter mana cost one, two, and then three but they all return at the same time, so they leave the graveyard at the same time. Uh, Command the Dread Horde is another one, the other rare in the deck. Uh, Tortured Existence is one of the utilities that you can use to discard a card and return a card, so you get to loop that around if you want. And then Endbringer's Revel is also return a creature from graveyard to his hand, and any player may play this, so you're not the only one that can use this one, so be careful with this one. So that's part one of the uh, utility. Part two is actually the the utilizing your creatures to draw cards and do other things. So like a Bone Splinters, you can sacrifice a creature to, draw, to destroy a, another creature. Costly Plunder lets you sack a creature to draw two cards. Same thing with Alter's Reap. Bankrupt in Blood lets you uh, sacrifice two creatures to draw three cards. Merciless Resolve, same thing, sacrifice a creature or a land and draw two cards. Remember, Scare Tiller lets you use the ability to sacrifice a land as well. Painful Lessons, it's I've got a bunch of these actually. It's a lot of the, you know, draw two cards, lose two life. So it's Painful Lessons, Read the Bones is the best one of the bunch. Succumb to Temptation, Morbid Curiosity lets you sacrifice an artifact or a creature and then you draw cards equal to the converted mana cost of the sacrifice permanent. And then Bitter Revelation, you look at the top four cards of your library, put two into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard, you lose two life. So you draw two out of the four, and then two go into your graveyard, which is not a bad thing in this type of deck. Alright, and then the third section for utility. So you want to be able to, sometimes you need to get some cards back. You got Feldenskin and Cranial Archive. Archive. They both sh shuffle uh, graveyards into libraries. This one lets you draw a card, the archive, and Feldon's King just removes itself from the game. <laughs> uh, Skeleton Shard, and this is going to be important when I go over the next thing. Uh, it lets you return an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand, so that's good for a couple things. Things, le things like, uh, does this exile itself? Yeah, it does. Uh, things that are land grabbers you can bring back, but it's the combo that I have up next, because I do have an infinite combo in here. Uh, but And you want to be able to get the pieces back. Skeleton Shard will do that. Uh, Demon Tail Harburk, however you say it, is actually in here just because the equip cost is to sacrifice a creature. The bonus is, so it's a sack outlet and it makes a creature bigger. And when you make a creature bigger, you can attack with it. Specifically if it's, say, your commander and you can do more damage with the commander damage because you're trying to get 21 commander damage, 40 damage, or bring your opponent's health to zero. Giving something plus 4 attack is always great. <laughs> And of course, always Diabolic Tutor. Good stuff to have there. You can go search for something. So that's a couple of the things for utility that go along with this deck. Uh, as far as upgrades go for this, for utility, you've got a couple ways you can go. So for spells, the way you can upgrade this is you can use things like Exhum or Living Death. Animate Dead is a good one. 
Patriarch's Bidding is a good one as well. And even Virtus' Maneuver, they all do what you want to do in this deck. Uh, for other utility, <laughs> you've got Graveyard Return Spells. So you can just go to the MTG Familiar and look to see. I think that I've picked the best that I could find. I could be wrong, so I would definitely go ahead and look at things like that. You have other things that you can use to fill your graveyard as well, like Buried Alive and Entomb. So there's those kind of things. And then since sacrificing creatures is a thing here, you've got other things that you can use for utility, like Black Market helps to add mana to your mana pool. Dictative Erebos, because you're sacrificing creatures, you can make your opponent sacrifice creatures. And same thing with Grave Pact. And then you have Tutors. We're in black. Tutors are Black's thing. You've got Demonic Tutor, you've got Grim Tutor, you've got Vampiric Tutor. You know, all these things can help make this deck better, faster, and more efficient. So, that's a couple of different things I would add to this deck. Monetarily speaking, can't do it on a budget. <coughs> Half those cards are $30, $40, $50 dollar cards. Now, I mentioned Cabal Paladin earlier. Uh, I took it to the side, so it reads as it's 4 to cast for a 4-2, and whenever you cast a Historic Spell, which I explained was Artifacts, as well, uh, basically we're going to focus on Artifacts here, because that's what the Historic part of it I'm talking about. Each opponent loses 2 life. So, two things. I've got a loop here. Mirror Retriever and Workshop Assistant are the other loop, the better loop from the uh, the two zombies, or the Grave Shifter and Grave... Uh, whatever they're called. Anyway. So Mirror Retriever reads, when it dies, return another artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Workshop Assistant says, when it dies, return another artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. They're colorless. Being colorless is a good thing. Because the other part of this whole venture is an Ashnod's Altar. So, you can sacrifice one to gain two colorless. So if you have one in play, one in the grave, you sacrifice one, you get two mana... You bring one from your graveyard to your hand, and you have two mana available to cast the next one. Now, I see that Workshop Assistant does say three, but remember, if Tormod is in play, whenever you do that, you create another 2-2 two, two zombie token that you can also sack to the altar. So now you have a net of four mana you're gaining off of each time you do the loot. You're only spending three on one half of it and two on the other, so you're gaining a net of either two or one colorless mana, Okay. That's an infinite mana loop right there with Tormod in play. As long as nobody interrupts it, it's infinite mana. It's infinite sack triggers. It's also infinite leaves the, the graveyard into your hand triggers. And then you're casting them with the mana that you're given. So it's also infinite whenever an artifact enters the battlefield it triggers. So underhand designs is your win for that. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under control, you may pay one. Remember, you're going to be creating excess mana. So you're going to be able to have the extra one. If you do, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So that's inf now you've turned it into infinite mana, infinite life gain, infinite damage to each opponent. And then you add the Cabal Paladin in. It's infinite triggers for the Cabal Paladin to do two damage to each opponent. So that's where your infinite loop turns into damage, turns into everything. On top of that, if you don't have every piece, you can also add a Golem Foundry in. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, which you'll be doing because the... Mirror Retriever and Workshop Assistant are both artifacts. You put a charge counter on it, and then you can remove three counters from the Foundry to create another token. Again, creating more stuff on the field that you can sacrifice. So, for this to work, you need both, and that's where the searchers come in. But because your deck searches for things, puts things in graveyard and stuff like that, and you can get them back, this is the infinite loop right here. This loop here creates so many different instances of infinite for you, you should have no problem killing your opponent. So, now, on top of that, there are other things you can do to make this deck work better. So, for win cons, this is the final section of, of suggestions. Uh, you could be cheeky and do Mortal Kombat, which says you win the game if you, during your upkeep if you have 20 or more creature cards in your graveyard. You can possibly get there. Not the best way to win, but it's an upgrade. The obvious one here is Torment of Hellfire. If you've added the Urborg and Cabal Coffers, you've created infinite mana. Torment of Hell, or you don't even need that, just the infinite mana loop of the Ashnod's Altar with the two artifacts creates infinite mana. You can add Torment of Hellfire, make your opponent sacrifice everything they have, discard everything they have, and then they have to lose three life after that. For each one they can't. And then the... If you want to kill one opponent, you can add a Drain Life 
obviously, you know, I can't do so... Uh, there's a black-red one that you can't do because this is mono black. So, unfortunately, you can't do that. But, you know, you have options. But it is in there. There is an infinite loop. If you want to win another way, you can just attack with all the, the tokens that you're creating. The 2-2 two, two zombie tokens. You know, there's a couple ways you can win with this deck. This is, you know... It's your choice. I'm making the deck. You guys just improve it after that. So, that is my Tormod, the Desecrator Commander deck. Technically, it's Tormod Keskit. Not really what it's meant to be. This is all based around Tormod, but because Keskit can go in the command zone as a partner, you can have access to it because it does what you want. It puts things in the grave. It puts things in your hand. It filters through your deck. Anyway, so that is my deck. That's the video for the day. Uh, as always, I'm going to ask you, like the video, thumbs up. Thumbs down is bad. Thumbs up is good. Please, give me the thumbs up. Uh, share the video out. Uh, there's plenty of groups out there on the Facebook. There's other places like, you know, I don't know. Whatever. Social media is rampant. There's so many I can't even name them all. But the one I use is Facebook for now. Uh, so share it out there in the groups. There's plenty of groups out there. I share them, but, you know, if you're looking for suggestions on stuff, if somebody's looking for a suggestion for a new deck, maybe share this one, this deck. Uh, and then subscribe. Uh, I'm almost at 240. I'd like to be at 300 by the end of the month. I don't know if I'm going to get there, but I'd like to get there. So like, subscribe, share, all those good things. Uh, please remember I'm also, this deck is for sale. Uh, these are my budget decks. They all of them, all my budget decks are for sale. So, this one is forty dollars plus shipping. If you want to purchase it or want to talk to me about purchasing purchasing this or other decks, message me on Facebook. I have the link in the description below. Other than that, uh, oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. I've got the mystery packs as well. Uh, I do unboxings. I did an unboxing for my Commander's Legends box, and I accidentally deleted the video. It was a bad box anyway, so it won't be up. I have two more boxes to go through, so hopefully the next box will be a better video anyway. But I lost the first one. Anything that doesn't go into a deck such as this, or my regular decks that I keep for myself, goes into those mystery packs. They're $5 a piece. I do all of one color, or I do a, a, what I call the everything bagel. For you Jewish people out there, I myself am one of them. Uh... The Everything Bagel includes everything Encompassing Magic that includes gold, artifact, and non-basic lands, along with all five colors. So, if you're interested in purchasing one of those, I have ads up on Facebook for both the decks and for the mystery packs. Go ahead and send me a message. Unt so, I guess that's, that's pretty much it for the day. Uh, until next week, thank you for watching. Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns, put them in the comments below or contact me. Have a good one. I'll see you next week.